Hello, my wonderful viewers. Welcome to my platform. This is Linda's TV show. If it is your first time of coming across this channel and you like what you see after watching, please subscribe, put on your notification bell, set it to all notification. In that way, you'll be able to get notified each time I upload a new video, even those without notification. Here we react to all forms of videos, international and local. Every Saturday by 2 p.m. we have our interaction section. You are free to call in to air your opinion about the happenings in our society. Invite your friends, share my videos with your families and colleagues. Do not keep this information to yourself. Myself, I will be sitting down here to watch this video together with you from the beginning to the end. Then we'll go to the comment section and leave our comment, our opinion about the video we we'll watch constructively. But you know, the issues that we were seeing, this is your banditry, kidnapping, poor economy, you know, endangering poverty was getting, just getting too much. So that was why I said, I am going to run. You know, because if it appears as if there's nobody, no Nigerian, who is competent enough, who is knowledgeable enough to do it, I know I have what it takes to do it. So that's why I volunteered to run. But I also saw that the platform on which I was standing was not the correct platform because you, you know, on the day I pulled out of it, I made statements to the fact that the PDP was obviously playing games with us, those of us who came from the South, that a decision had been taken that this party would pick his presidential candidates from the North. And, you know, that hypocrisy was quite worrisome to me. And I said it publicly, and I have improved right, because against all odds, PDP still went ahead, and against the interests and uh, uh, aspirations of majority of Southerners, you know. Now APC has stolen the show, by, you know, their governors coming up and saying, you know, power must shift to the south, which is which was the mantra that we pleaded. So when I knew that was going to happen, I said that I was going to step out of it. But then, truly, if I'm stepping out of it, you know, it cannot be for nothing. I should step out and support what is equitable, what is just. And what is just and equitable for me is that power, more, you know, we agreed it may not be written, but we agreed. I've been in this game for 42 years. I've, I, I was there at the session of PDP. I know everything. We agreed that power will shift from the north to the south and vice versa. So automatically, after Buhari's eight years, power, it doesn't matter whether it is in PDP or APC, power must come to the, to the south. And if power indeed comes to the south, in the south, what do we have? We have three zones. We've got southwest. Southwest has had about some just eight years. Southwest still had a current vice president who by next year will have completed another eight years. In all fairness to me, Southwest ought not to be in this equation. Then South South, you know, it was uh, a South South president, good luck Jonathan, who left the stage for Buari to come in. So they were also not qualified. We had in the South, in the South, we had a zone that has never done it. You know, we cannot live by injustice and expect God to prosper us. In America, it doesn't work that way. So that's why I said, I, if I'm the only person, I'm going to pitch, pitch my tent with the Southeast and I'm going to stand on this matter. And when I look at the Southeast, to me, the very best of the aspirants that were coming on, you know, at that time was uh, Peter O'B. I will even publicly here admit that in spite of my preparedness, in, in spite of you know, all that I've acquired and all that, He's a much better person than myself to run the to run, to, to run the country, and it's, it's not about me. It's not about personal. It's about the country. It's about the nation. If you feel that you know well about the country, you know nobody, you know even a blind person can see that Peter will be is what it is. Now to your question of whether it was uh, a just, I mean, a wise decision to, to take. <laughs> Circumstances and happenstance have now shown us that we did something was, that was right. Because, you know, we saw there were many, there were many reasons. And I'll be open with you on this, on this program. You know, I'll be open with you. I hope Peter will not mind. You know, we saw that, we saw the deception that was being played out in PDP. We also saw that there were things that were being done. And if we had to participate in it, 
even if we win, it will undermine our rhetorics. You know, we want to stand for what is right. We want to change the system. You don't change the system by first of all committing crime or doing something that is corrupt or not right. And say, gentlemen, look, I have to do it. If I didn't do it, you know, I would not be here. That's not right. Peter told me, he said, look, that's what he calls me. He said, I would rather lose doing what is right than to win doing what is wrong. And I agreed with him. And besides that, it was obvious that there was no future in PDP. The governors have ganged up and the governors have insisted that they wanted to be, at that time, they wanted to be president and vice president. And they are powerful and strong people in the party. So we didn't stand a chance. And if we are not left today, you know, the aspirations of Peter will be, his poten I mean, his potentials will have all been dead and buried. And not only that, not only that, Today, Peter Obi is on the ticket. And, you know, for goodness sake, somebody from Eastern Nigeria is on the Nigerian ticket. Even if that is what he has achieved, it's good enough. But you must admit that your party, the Labour Party, has a lot to do in terms of matching the two major political parties. That are, are you joking? PC are you joking? And the <laughs> what? Yes. But what strategies are you... Um, employing to bridge this gap? And how optimistic are you that Obi will match uh, a Tinubu and an Atiku toe-to-toe -to -toe in just about eight months? Well, now that you mentioned Tinubu, let me also seize this opportunity to congratulate uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu for doing something that was absolutely impossible. Uh, I congratulate him. Uh, I know he's a very astute politician, very dogged fighter. And he has done uh, the act of the impossible. And we really, really wish him well. But talking about the Labour Party, the, the Labour Party is, is a small party. There's no doubt about it. And that's why people are a little bit worried that, you know, have, have we done what is right or what is reasonable? But you see, in these times, in the, you know, these are, not the, these are not the usual times. Look, I'll give you just one example. In the last 20 years, INEC has, been, has spent mm -hmm. billions and billions of naira on voter education and encouraging voters to come and vote. But a gentleman now decides, I'm going to run for president. I am in this party, and I'm asking you, gentlemen, I mean, youths of Nigeria, go out and register. And there's a whole tsunami. So, you know, people, you know, people in this country the political establishment in Nigeria is totally unprepared for what is coming. There is a major revolution, political revolution that is in the wake, but it is presently imperceptible. For those who are not looking, I've, I've listened to, you know, to commentators and all that. When they talk, they say, well, uh, who's going to win between Atiku and uh, Bola Tinubu? And I just laugh. None of these two parties will win. And that's the truth. Because you know, look, this is an old odd. This, the two, as, I mean, you know, when we used to say, I said it before, when I, even when I was in PDP, I said that there was no difference any longer between the PDP and the APC. And all that has been proved, proved right because the present chairman of PDP, you know, I mean, of APC was an, a PDP man. The secretary of Missouri was a PDP pers a senator. You know, even Atiku himself that is contesting under PDP today contested under APC before. So these are two, they are not even twins. They are just one block divided into two. You know, and, but the, belong, the essential thing is that APC and PDP belong to an old order that is fading and passing away. And it comes like that in the history of any nation. These two pillars will crash. There's nothing anybody can do about it. The, what is coming up is a, a youth revolution in this country. People are underestimating it. And, I, you know, people, I laugh when people say, oh, Peter Obi is popular on Twitter. Peter Obi is popular on Facebook. Yes, he's popular on Facebook. And Facebook has, you know, Facebook and social media may not have contributed significantly to political development in Nigeria before now. But they will matter now because we have the key. We are going to use what it takes to unleash them on the political system. There are over 32 million, 32 million you know uh, nigerians on facebook i mean on, on on the social media 24 of them on facebook about 30.9 or so are on whatsapp now 
then you know forty percent of that you know come you know getting PVC and voting will shock PDP and APC. We will, we will you know by the time uh, Obi wins this election, he will he will win with a margin that will be more than the votes of PDP and a and APC added together. You will see. It is not. It is going to be by youth power. It is going to be by youth power. And when he eventually wins, it's going to be a youth government. You will see a 29-year-old person as Minister for Communication. You will see a 32-year-old woman as Minister for Interior. It is, you know, I, you know, I am a very strong man behind Peter Obi, but I'm 70 years old. What do I want? I don't, long, I don't want to be a minister. I have passed that. When I was working for Bassanjo, minister used to come to my office to lobby me to see the president, to get something from the president. So what I want to do, you know, that was how many years ago? More than 20 years ago. There's that general notion that those numbers that you just quoted are just numbers and those people don't go out to vote. Yes. Those are I, the I, I, that are voting. Yes, my dear. I accept. They do it, but they are numbers. They're human beings. They're Nigerians. But guess what? They are angered. They have a visceral motivation. They want to take part. They want to take their country back. And they are, you know, they are, they are educated. They are mobile. They, you know, they, they are active. They themselves. Have you seen this video about people trying to get PVC? Yes. What yes. do you make Which of this? Which is where videos? we were going to go with, with this as well. Because, of course, you're talking as... I'm just you, praying, I'm just, we have I'm just, I'm just praying that, yeah, that uh, INEC will rise to the occasion. All right, by making well, sure that they every released a statement. Did you say so what they, they did release a statement that they will extend registration, which is which is yeah. I, I read it, and yes. you know that is very commendable. But extend they must extend the regis registration, they must make sure that materials are available, okay. But also, governments must ensure that every Nigerian, no matter where he comes from. Whenever, wherever he goes, he has a right to vote anywhere, and therefore he has a right to collect to, to collect PVC from his point of residence, his place of residence. This we must do. It is even more important than the election because it has it's got to do with the fundamental human rights of the Nigerian citizens. That must be done. We need government to come up and to strongly protect the rights of the citizens in this matter. You know, this issue of some people not being allowed to register, some people, you know, you know, I mean, hooligans driving away people. We should not allow it in this country. It should not happen. All right, Dr. Kope. Let's talk about what expectations Nigerians should have in relation to who Peter Obi's running mate, likely running mate, will be. And what's going to inform that decision? <laughs> that's, a very <laughs> that's a very tough one. Uh, the issue of the running mate, number one, it has to, be, it has to come from the north. The running man must come from the north. But luckily for us, we don't have the problems that the APC has. You know, that oh, Peter Obi is a Christian. Most people in the north, when, I mean, I hope I'm not saying what is not right, but many people, you know, in the far north are Muslim. So it's a question of picking somebody either from the far north or from the middle belt, but essentially it has to be a, a Muslim. But also we are thinking... You know, because Obi is, you know, extremely or superlatively popular in the South, the penetration in the North is still not at a desired point that we will like it. So we need somebody, a very strong political figure, who himself, on his own, has both the political resource and the financial resource and the sagacity, you know, to popularize this movement in the North itself. So those are the things that we're looking at. And, you know, I, I also hope that the person is a young person. Okay, so you, you, do you, any female candidate probably? Sex is not an issue here. It's, yeah. You know, if it is female, fine. I mean, if you look at Peter Obi, Peter Obi, you know, in, in his last administration, his chief of staff was a female. His minister for finance was a female. He, you know, I mean, there were about four or five females taking very, very strong responsible positions in that administration. So, you know... We, it would be, you know, the, of course, we're going to be gender, gender sensitive in all these things that we do. But, you know, competence, capability, capacity will be, you know, deciding factors. Uh, you also have to admit that your candidate needs, you know, heavyweight allies, um, doesn't he? Uh, you know, are you actively wooing like minds from the established parties or are you, you waiting know, you talk about for the disgruntled allies? ones to decamp to yours? 
Yeah. Well, when, when, when you say heavyweight allies, you're yeah, also still going back to Egypt. You're going, you know, that is, you know, the allies that we need are the 100 million Nigerians that are poor. The allies that we need are the 40 million Nigerian, I mean, I mean, youths that have no jobs. Those are the allies that we need. Those are the people that this country belongs to. For goodness sake, people like me, you know, and the rest of us should step aside. Let, the, let these young people whose future we, you know, we really want to bother about, let them come and handle the reins of power by themselves. And in any case, now they are talking about it. You know, I hope that they will back it by collecting their PVCs. I hope they are listening to me, wherever they are in the country, whether you are from the north or from the south. Poverty has no ethnicity. It has no religion. If you wake up this morning with nothing in your pocket, whether you're in Kano, Maduguri, or, or, or Lagos, or Iberu, my hometown, it's the same thing. So, you know, Peter B is coming to rescue the poor, to pull out as many as possible in the first four years out of poverty, to make life more comfortable, more meaningful, to stop wastage and decline in this country. So going back to pillars that we have left, going back to the so-called the owners of the country or, you know, the big wigs. No, that's not what we're looking at. We want to go down to the grass. We want to go down. We want to bring in young people. We want, you know, those are the people we want. To, you know, it is for them that we're doing all this. Like I've just told you, I have little or nothing to benefit from, from the next government. You know, but I have children, you know, and I've spent so much resource in educating them. I, you know, I, when I came as a young person, you know, and I left medical school, you know, the future was so bright. Everything was, so, was looking so good. I can't say that for my, for my, for my children. And we, I, I pray that I'm able to be part of a system that will reverse all these things and bring them back to where we are. And the only way we can do that is to stop doing the things that we used to do in the, in the, you know, in the past. And, you know, we, that is also the same reason why this... If these political infrastructures and platforms that we used to stand on must collapse, mm. you know, PDP, APC have of necessity expired. Mm. That's the truth, and it doesn't really matter, you know. But that, you know, uh, uh, Atiku Abubakar, great guy, you know, I've worked with him. In fact, I mean, he was one of those who, you know, led me into, you know, he and uh, Yomi Edu were the people who led me into uh, into Abbasidjo's regime. But that, you know, my great friend. We were in the trenches together in Nadeko. But our time has gone. Are our time has passed. Are you saying your party, the Labour Party, does not need any heavyweight to succeed this We don't election? need any heavyweight. Let me tell you about the Labour Party. I'm glad you asked that question. Yes. We don't need any heavyweight. Sure. The greatest political infrastructure in the country today is the Labour. But you see, they do not understand who they are until we came. The, you know, the Labour emanated or came out of our colonial past. You know, in the colonial past, the, the whites were, on to, were, you know, they were in charge. So people who are working, you know, were, I mean, their leadership were, were interested only in their well-being and welfare. They never conceived the idea that they can actually ever rule. So what we're saying now is that, look, you people are the workers. You are, when, when Peter says, let us move from consumption to production. He's talking about let us include, let us bring in the Nigerian workers, all right, into what, whatever we're doing. Let me, let me tell you what, 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 what NLC, I mean, what the Labour Party encompasses of. Labour Party has the NLC in it. The NLC has a, regi a registered membership of 5 million Nigerians, 5 million Nigerians, without their families, though. They have TUC. TUC has a membership of 8 million Nigerians. You know, there are a Nigerian Union of Teachers, there's uh, road transport workers, there are, you know, there are professionals. This is the biggest thing. In the, you don't need anybody. This is the biggest thing. And we're going to arouse this giant. We're going to wake this, the Nigerian workers. And we're going to unleash them on the political system. Nigeria will not have seen what is coming. I'm telling you. Manifesto wise, what should we expect? Of course, we've talked about the labor here. It's been a very important factor. Yeah. But let's talk about the economy, infrastructure. Education is an area that Peter has been quite big on. Let's talk about what Peter is bringing to the table. That is not currently existing. We have a manifesto that has been done, a draft. But, you know, we are unable to make it public because, you know, we have not taken a new toga. 
the toga of labor. I know labor is highly ideological. You understand? So it will be presumptuous of us to first, I mean, our, 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 our manifesto on them. We are just operators and operatives. The real party is the labor movement. So they must have very serious influence on whatever we're going to tell Nigerian people that we're going to do. Because, you know, wholesomely, everybody says we don't have structure. That is true. But the structure we have is labor. So we cannot do anything without them. But whatever we do, whatever our manifestos will be, is going to reflect a lot on the labor ideology, which is, you know, which, which, is, which centers around workers, you know, and their, you know, and their welfare. So this is what we're going to do. But basically, basically, the theme that will run across that manifesto is moving from consumption to production. Yeah. I wanted to take you back on, you know, the heavyweights that you are saying you may not need. Uh, I'm not saying we may not, we don't. You will not need for the Labour Party. But if, if they come, it's fine, no problem. Okay. But we're not searching for heavyweights. Right. We are looking for Nigerian youths. We are looking for young people, right. w women and men. If you were to um, analyze the APC primaries that, you know, uh, brought uh, Asiwajibola Ahmed Tinubu uh, as the uh, flag bearer, would you say that that could replicate during the 2023 general election? And, and how would your party <laughs> stand uh, a competitive uh, election like that? You know, you're, you're speaking like the Jews. You know, you when, so. Christ, when Christ came, they didn't see him. They didn't know. You're still talking about what, what happens at the APC, APC convention. Reflect, I'm telling you that before the 2023 elections, APC, PDP will have kaput. They, they, they have no relevance on what will happen subsequently. These young people are coming, and they are going to take over, whether we like it or not. We are just operating as guides. We are going to guide them. We are going to moderate and modulate them. We are going to help to stabilize them. It is their government that is coming in. It has nothing to do with APC, nothing to do with PDP. These are you know, sepul political sepulchers, the, 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 it's finished. You know, that's what Christ said on the cross. He said, it is finished. For APC, for PDP, it is finished. You, mean, you talk about, you know, the label, and I'm still stuck on that because you're talking about the youth, which is you're capitalized on it. In what ways are you reaching this youth? A lot of these guys, when you talk about production to, um, consumption to production, it goes over their heads, really. You're talking to some of them are laymen. They don't understand how exactly this is going to happen. They might want to see change. But what ways are you communicating and sensitizing this youth? Thank you very much. You know, it's the ways that people are criticizing us on. We're, you know, we are employing a lot of social media connections and contacts. Because in any case, 80% of people on social media are the young people. So if you, talking, if you say that 32 million people are on social media, 80% of them are you know, young people. So whatever activities you engage, I mean, yesterday, Peter was on uh, Twitter space for several hours. I have been on Twitter space for three hours. So, I mean, yes, when he was talking to people, it was, you know, he, was, he had an audience of about 4,000, 5,000, something like that. You understand? So these are the things, where, these are the instruments, these are the modern tools of communication that the leadership of the APC and PDP are not likely going to pay attention to or see their relevance. But this is the embodiment of what we are using because that is where our constituency is. And we're, you know, we're using everything that we have to deploy in that, in that direction. But also, let me tell you, surprisingly, these young people are even moving ahead of us. On the, look, I do not sleep again. You know, I get, a, I get calls from everybody and everywhere. WhatsApp, you know, we are, we are this group, we are doing this. The people have done so much. They are doing so much on their own. You know, the most dangerous thing is this. While the PDP and APC people, I was in PDP for, some, for several years, mind you, so I know what I'm saying. Nobody can tell me. Okubwe doesn't know what he's talking about. That's crap. You understand? You know, if you're a pope, I'm, I'm also a deputy pope. So, you know, the PDP and APC have to give money to voters to vote for them. Now, our own voters are saying, guess what? We have never seen Peter Obi, but we are voting for Peter Obi on their own. 
they are already galvanizing themselves, constituting themselves, you know, according to world's polling booths. So, you know, we even have a problem organizing them. We need to have a complete directorate to harness, you know, this youth, youthful ex exuberance. We don't have a problem winning this coming election. Only that it may sound, it may look quite unbelievable because it is something fresh, it is something new, it's something that people are not thinking about, but it's something that will overtake people like a tsunami. Right. We're waiting for that new wave. Well, as we begin to wrap up this conversation, today is Democracy Day. I'm not sure if you had a chance to listen to the president's address where he talked about assuring Nigerians a free, fair, and transparent election. Wonderful. Any thoughts on Democracy I thought that was, Day? I thought that was the highlight, I mean, that was the you know, high point of that address. You know, the only thing that Buhari can do now is, you know, and I think he has capacity to do it. You know, because I saw him at the, at the, at the Nigu Square on that day, you know, sitting down, appearing helpless. But this, I, I looked at him and said, this is the president's city. You could see that things were not going his way. But he had the tenacity, he had the temerity, he had the constraint to sit it through and allow it to happen. I, I do not like Buhari, but you know, let me tell you, that, if I, if I had an opportunity to be, in this, I mean, to be in the stadium, I would have requested for me to, uh, to hug him. You know, that was something really great. And I believe him this morning, when he said he is going to ensure a level playing field for this thing, and that people shouldn't take it like uh, life and death, he didn't take it like life and death. You know, look, I know what other people could have done. Even at that, at that venue, I know, you know, I've been, I've served two presidents, and I know what, even though, I mean, his time is going towards an end, but, you know, he's still the commander-in-chief. A lot could have happened at that stadium that day. Bola Tinubu and Co. must owe, I mean, they owe their emergence to the reticence and the, the humaneness and humility of Buhari, you know, constraining himself it was, he could, you know, you could see his face that this thing was not going the way he wanted, but he was mad enough, he was strong enough. You see, the, 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 the measure of strength is not your capacity to deploy it, but to restrain yourself when you can use it to achieve an end and you don't use it. Thank you so much, my wonderful viewers, for watching this video together with me from the beginning to the end. Like I said before, if you like what you see here, if you like what I do in this platform, as you have finished watching this video, please hit that red button that says subscribe and put on your notification bell to all notifications. In that way, you'll be able to know when I upload a new video. Share my videos, leave your comments in the comment section constructively. Until I meet your way again in my next video, I still remain your Linda's TV show. Bye-bye.